Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the BEN Podcast. Today, I had the pleasure of sitting down and spending some time with Rabbi Gotch Yudin. Rav Gotch is the founding Rosh Yeshiva of Yeshiva Ashrenu that started 12 years ago. All I could say after spending an hour with Rav Gotch is just he's real. Like The emotions in this episode with the topics that we talked about from Ezra Shorts being on Ashrenu to just the chesed that they do in the Yeshiva, it was just so special. And it was so real, and I can't wait for you guys to hear this. So just without further ado, it's time to jump into my episode of Gotch Yudin. Welcome to the Israel Gap Year Be'in Podcast. I'm your host, Avi Proctor, and in each episode, we get Be'in in-depth into the remarkable lives of individuals in Israel who dedicate themselves to inspiring the next generation of Kali Israel. So, welcome, Rav Yudin. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here right now. Thank you. Great to be here. <laughs> so I just want to start off and, and literally get right into it. Before we talk about, you know, the topic that I have for today, which was chesed, which I think I would almost title you as like the king of chesed or like the, the one of the role models of chesed, because that's, you know, a lot about what your shiva is about. Um, kind of take me a little bit through your background. How did you become the main Rosh Yeshiva of, of Yeshiva Dasharinu? And then kind of take me to how we got here today. First of all, I, I come from... Uh you, know, you could pick your friends, and you could pick uh, other things. You can't pick your parents. So, you know, you know, if you want to talk about role models and chesed, so I definitely um, was very lucky and very uh, privileged to grow up in a very unique home uh, where there was king of queen of chesed. Um, sorry. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I grew up as a rabbi's son. A lot of rabbi's sons definitely um, often don't necessarily go into the family business. Uh, it's pretty cool in our family. We have, Baruch Hashem, I have, uh, I'm one of seven, and uh, six out of seven are in Chinuch and in Rabbanus. And uh, I would think already, and I, you know, uh, growing up, for sure, you know, in terms of the, my parents are legendary when it comes to Chesed. Um, I was very lucky growing up in Fairlawn, New Jersey, a lot of my life. Uh, in my teenage years, for sure, centered around NCSY. Um, and uh, I, f- I think that definitely had, has and continues to have a major impact on my life. Um, NCSY in the day, and um, I date myself because I'm like 37 at the moment, but <laughs> in the day, there was, you know, particularly in New Jersey, we were, there were many, many uh, kids from Yeshiva, but there were many, many kids that were coming from public school backgrounds, and, you know, that was an amazing. Uh, opportunity in my life and from a very young age to be able to be involved in Kiruv and reaching out to, um, you know, to kids and to, you know, I'm 13 years old and I remember, you know, being able to say Shema and, you know, and Shema, Shema, you know, with kids from public school or to, so that was like an amazing start in terms of, uh, but, you know, growing up in a family uh, of uh, Rabbi and Rebetzin and my, you know, my parents for sure, Already, like in high school, already I think I thought I wanted to be a rabbi. Um, I don't know about a shul rabbi so much. That was, a, you know, definitely explored or dabbled in that a little bit, but definitely in terms of uh, an education. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely very privileged before we came and made Aliyah. So uh, I taught in Halal High School in Deal for like five years, first five years after we got married. And then I was an MTA for a year. That's where I went to high school. I have a lot of a car, so told, but I was only there for a year. Uh, Rabbi Gary Beitler and myself went back to uh, MTA, and we, you know, he ended up staying for I don't know over 20 years. I lasted one year at the time, but that's all right. And then uh, I moved on to Frisch, and I had to supposed to be a Rebbe in Frisch for another seven years after that. So thank God, around 15 years of you know uh, Jewish education um, in America before we came to uh, to Israel. So. For sure, I think, you know, a big influence on my life, if, you know, looking back in terms of, uh, is for sure, you know, NCSY, and for sure, growing up in the home which I grew up in, like, I don't know, every Shabbos, I'm looking here uh, at your table, you know, in, in, in my parents' home, there's like an island, a lot of people have islands in the kitchen, we have like Staten Island in the kitchen, because there's, you know, on average, 30, 40 people every Shabbat in my parents' home, um, you know, all in my dad's community, so many Jews from the former Soviet Union, so many families, a lot of Israelis that made Yerida. I don't know, Fairlawn, which, where I grew up, just happened to have been a, just a place. And my theory, and I believe there's a Pasuk, Achto Vachesed Yerdefuni, Kol Yimei And, you know, some people have to run after Chesed. 
So I apologize. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But I think my parents, um, you know, you become, you become so, such a, a special person in Chesed that Chesed starts running after you. So a lot of people, you know, look into to Chesed and, you know, no, no shortage of opportunities. But I, I really believe in my heart that, um, you know, a chesed came to them, like, i.e., because they were so focused on doing chesed in their life, and they were so interested in doing, you know, just how my parents' community came about. I mean, when they came to Fairlawn, and they're there now, I'm 37, doing a math. Um, I was three years old, so they're there 53 years, uh, 54 years soon. There wasn't even a Indian on a Friday night. My dad, you know, I was still young, I don't remember this, but go out literally onto the street, ask people if they were Jewish to see if they could come, you know, make a Indian on a Friday night. And then uh, after that, you know, uh, they started advertising that there'd be like a kiddish in shul. Now my mom is, a le- I mean, I don't, you can't on the camera, I don't know what you could see, but she's a legendary cook. And uh, they started advertising my mother's uh, kiddush. And before you knew it, I mean, the shul started off in our home, literally in her basement, maybe held 20, 30 people. Uh, initially, and you know that got too small. And then, as a kid growing up, they built a shul, literally attached to my house. I never owned a Shabbos coat in my life. I would like walk from our house, open up a door, and there was a shul, and there was like 250 people upstairs and a kids' room downstairs. And and that was for another five or six years. And then that got too small, and they knocked down two houses across the street. And Baruch Hashem, they're you know on a Shabbos, you know Dafyomi and four different minyanim, and uh, you know, but. You know, but I, that was like my life. That's, uh, you know, and to see that kind of growth from really nothing is big. You know, so my dad will attribute a lot of it to my mom's food. <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah, they're pretty, he's a pretty good educator. My parents are amazing educators. They're an amazing team um, when it comes to chinuch and uh, chesed. So I definitely, sorry. Yeah, I, ha- I have to say to, to see yeah. somebody talk about your father like in the way that you do it, it's 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 very very special. Yeah, so that's my parents, but just you know, uh, yeah. So you know, they're for sure, um, <laughs> they're for sure role models. Uh, you know, for me when it comes to Chesed, and you know, so in that regard, I, I really couldn't have had better teachers, um, you know, or role models. So uh, you know, taking the time of your upbringing and kind of going to, to when you got a little bit older, um, what was the process like for you? You know, you were working within Chinuch in America. You said you were working within Frisch. Like, what made you say to yourself, like, that's it. I'm going to Eretz I'm starting my own yeshiva and, and making that oh, happen. Oh, so, yeah, so we, we're jumping to that. That's a fair, good question. <laughs> um, so to be perfectly honest here, and I said I was very, very involved in NCSY. NCSY wasn't Bene Akiva. So a lot of people, like, you know, if you went to Bene Akiva as a kid growing up, you know, you went to Moshava for the summer. Oh, you know, I'm moving to Israel. You got a plan. I'm coming to Israel. So, you know, we're skipping a few steps here. I'll be honest with you, uh, in my life, you know, a very important um, way that sort of got here and Hashem runs the world. So I actually, you know, my wife, her name is Ruthie. I call her Lucy. Um, I love Lucy. It's another whole story, but she's from England. We met in Camp Hask. We were like, I think, Shidduch number 37. Um, I went to Camp Hask that summer just to find a wife, and she went 99% to help, well, she went 100% just to help uh, a handicapped Jewish kids. I went probably 99% to try and find a wife, maybe 1% to, uh, I don't know about one, but <laughs> give myself enough credit, but, uh, you know, so my wife is from England, is from England, and she was Miss B'nai Akiva, and really into uh, Israel and everything, but as a kid growing up, I definitely valued her, it's Israel, and thought it was something, but it was never, like a dream of mine, it was never, and you know, and as I mentioned, Baruch Hashem, after we got married and we lived in Teaneck for 15 years, we were terribly happy in Teaneck. And Baruch Hashem, we had five children there, and I, I loved my time at Frisch, you know, I loved being a Rebbe there, I eventually became assistant principal there. We were sailing, everything was going amazing. And uh, really, really, really happy there. Um, full transparency, we actually uh, came to, uh, my wife's from England, and when we got married, the deal was, well, she actually moved to Fairlawn. Well, we moved to Teaneck. She came, first lived in Fairlawn a little bit, and lived in Teaneck for 15 years. And the deal was, she came to live with me in America, and usually Chagim, usually uh, Sukkot, Pesach, would be with her family. So 
definitely, you know, it opened up the world to me because I never was on a plane actually until uh, I came for my year in Israel. For the first time, I was on a plane. You know, and I really sound like a really uh, artifact, but that's uh, somewhat true. But uh, she definitely opened up worlds to me because you know I don't know I've probably been to England now in my life forty or fifty times, you know because uh, you know we used to go there twice a year, um, and wherever my in-laws went for Pesach, that was you know so we've been to exotic places, Gibraltar, or south of France. One year my in-laws said we're going to Israel for Pachag, and I wasn't complaining, and we'll go to Israel for Pachag. And we came here, and um, we were staying in Herzliya for Yantif, and friends of ours, who we were friends with for many, many years in Teaneck, said, why don't you come to us for the last days to Beit Shemesh? And, you know, my in-laws, you know, reluctantly, because they wrote us, it was a little uncomfortable, and uh, little did they know. So we decided we'll go to Beit Shemesh for the last days of Chag. And uh, we were there, and we started walking down the street. We live in Scheinfeld now. We're living here 18 years. I would say three quarters of the block were people that either myself or my wife Ruthie grew up with either in England or in America and so much of the community and we're like, wow. And Ruthie turned to me and she said, maybe we could live here. And it's actually a pretty crazy story because we were eating by good friends of ours or Mark and Tamar Lesnick and we were eating on their outside pergola. And when she said, maybe we could live here, I don't know if she, she I'm not a Navi, but maybe my wife is a prophetess because we ended up literally buying the other side of their house. And that's where we live to this day, sort of like the Ude Nicks, but like we literally divided up the property and when she said, maybe we could live here, we actually live there. Wow. <laughs> and it was never the plan, it was just on a whim. And uh, I don't know, we never looked back. I will tell you something really beautiful. In terms of, uh, there's an expression in, in Yiddish Skype, I have a student who, um, and part of sort of what got us here, I have a student who I taught in Frisch, it was right before Pesach, and I remember I was teaching him the Gemara at the very end of Mako, so the story of Rabbi Akiva, and uh, he was walking with the other four rabbis, and I was giving them a Dvar Torah before to say at the Seder, and uh, the famous story there, you know, four rabbis are looking, and they see our bias, and there are places where the foxes are running, and the four rabbis start crying. Rabbi Akiva starts laughing, and uh, the four rabbis, they say to Rabbi Akiva, why are you laughing? He says, well, why are you crying? So he says, what do you mean, why are you crying? Foxes are running where the, the Holy of Holies. Are. How can I not cry? Why are you laughing? So Rabbi Akiva, you know, said, well, listen, I know of two nevuas, and there's a navi that tells us that there's going to be Tzion Basada Ticharesh, that there's going to be Nebuch, there's going to be a Chorban. But once, that now that I see that that prophecy has come true, I also know that there's going to be a navi Zechariah tells us, that, oh, Yeshu, there's going to come a time when children are going to be able to play in the streets of Yerushalayim, they're going to be kicking a ball in the streets of Yerushalayim. Oh. So as I'm teaching this, one of my students, she raises her hand, she said, my sister, she actually just came back from her year in Israel from seminary, and she was showing us pictures, and she saw this square where there were kids kicking around a soccer ball in the old city. So she showed that to me, and wow, that was amazing. And we were going that year, at Pesach, to Israel. So once my student showed me that picture, I said to and I've been to the old city many times. I, I've never been to that square. I never saw that wall with the Hatta Pasuk. So that Cholomo, I, I said to my wife Ruth, I said, maybe it's great. We should really, we got to take the kids. We got to go to the square. And so, you know, it's not the main square of, you know, the old city, you got with the pizza and all the shawarma, everything is good, but you have to make a right and you go through a whole bunch of, and you get to the square. But when you get there, so our kids, Kanina Hara, at the time, you know, were here, as I said, 18 years. At the time, we came with a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old and a 7-year-old. I remember we got them balloonies, and we were like, call them away, and we were walking around. It was hot, but I, and I remember we, but I couldn't wait to get to this uh, pasuk that was in the walls of the old city. And we actually took a picture of all our kids in front of this with the balloons. They were in the pasuk, Od Yeshvu, you know, there's going to come a time when kids are gonna once again play in the streets of Yerushalayim. And uh, that picture uh, made such an impact on myself and uh, my wife and I. Uh, we actually took that picture and we blew it up into a really, really big um, uh, picture and we hung it up in our fat crib, P-H-A-T, <laughs> in uh, Teaneck, in our den. Um, and it stayed there for like a year, year and a half. The sun nays, there's a puzzle, the Kabetsku, the Senu. Sorry. Wow. Yeah, so that was, uh, that's how we got here. 
you should know, um, my student, she, um, she lives here. She made Aliyah. You know, uh, you never know the impact, you know, uh, that your students could have upon you. And uh, that was a decision that we made, you know, 18 years ago, probably one of the best decisions ever made in my life. I'll be perfectly honest here, when we uh, decided to make Aliyah and to come here, I'm not bragging, but we made Aliyah, I didn't really have a job, and I didn't know what I was going to do, and I'll be, I'll be honest with you, I thought I would probably teach maybe in, you know, Beit Shemesh or one of the local yeshiva here, one of the seminaries here, and that was the plan. And uh, I remember uh, a friend of mine uh, came over to me, maybe December, and we were making Aliyah that summer, and he said, what do you... You know, uh, gosh, did you see the ad in the uh, newspaper for Camp Morasha was looking for a director? So I said, yeah, okay, that's really nice. Camp Morasha was looking for a director, but I want to make Aliyah and I want to live in Israel for the summer. And actually, in the advertisement, it said, um, Camp Morasha looking for a director, and it said, a candidate can't live in Israel. So, I don't know, between you and me, in my, in my mind, I really didn't see, you know, how that was really connected and ignored it. And my friend came and said, did you call? And I said, no. And he actually came over to my house and he actually dialed the number and handed me the phone. He said, just speak to them. And uh, anyway, I don't know, I spoke and sure enough, uh, so I was lucky and uh, was privileged to become the director of Camp Marasha. And I did that for the first seven years while we were living here. So A, you know, the opportunity as I mentioned before, with NCSY and informal education, which was a major, major impact, you know, on my life. And, you know, uh, formal education as a Rebbe I loved. And, you know, I loved teaching in Frisch because, yes, it's a high school and it's a school. But at the time, you know, I had the opportunity to be myself and to, to you know, whatever personality and to bring stuff, had to be a creative in the classroom there. And I have a tremendous amount of a car sato for that. But, you know, my life, it's another component of my life, but uh, probably been in some type of summer program as Garrett of camp. As a kid growing up, my parents were the camp rabbi and Rebbitson of Camp Hillel. So my whole life, I, you know, literally from age two, three, uh, Hillel, and uh, I was in Camp Corina for a couple of summers, and Morasha Kolo for high school, and then became a counselor in Camp Morasha, and then worked back in Camp Hillel, and then we were in Camp Masoa for many, many, many summers, and back to Morasha. I was probably... I don't know, probably 45 summers, 50 summers of my life, I've been some type of camp or informal Jewish educational type of uh, program. So um, Morasha was an amazing, amazing opportunity, um, A, to be able to help my children acclimate here in Israel. For the first seven years, I was sort of, my, my hours, I was keeping American hours at that time, so I was actually starting four or five in the afternoon and uh, you know, work until 12, one o'clock at night. I would go in one week out of every uh, month to the States, and I did that for seven years. And Baruch Hashem, you know, Morasha at the time, I, took, I had the schus to take over after Rabbi Rohaf to go, Vashalom, and I think Morasha at the time was going a little bit of a decline in, uh, in numbers and stuff, and Baruch Hashem had the opportunity to uh, help uh, get it back on track. Actually had this, I, had, I actually hired Jeremy Joseph hmm. as a 17-year-old young assistant. I had been in Masora with him for five or six summers prior and saw what an amazing talent he was. And I said, why don't you come to Morasha, Jeremy? Maybe you'll like, you know, be like an assistant to the program director. And uh, for another podcast, for another time, it poured. Like for almost a week, there was a state of emergency in Lake Homo. And bridges collapsed and people in the area died. We had to cancel, postpone the first day of camp by four days. People in Camp La Vie were coming to stay by us. And with all that craziness, everything, Jeremy at one point turned to me and said, you know, I, I don't know if there's really much for me to do in Camp Morasha. And I said, listen, Jeremy, I know it's been a lot of craziness here and there's a flood. In it, but trust me, I think there'll be really, there's really what for you to do in this camp. So that's a small uh, tidbit. So... Uh, Hashem, and that was an amazing, amazing school, and I really uh, loved my years in uh, in Morasha. And I will tell you that, you know, um, during that time, uh, A I had, a, as I mentioned, to help our kids acclimate at the time and to, uh, you know, settle into Israel. We didn't come with like little, little kids. We came a little bit later in life. Our eldest was in ninth grade, and uh, Baruch Hashem, we came with five kids. We were zochet to have another daughter 
after we made Aliyah, but um, you know, just to be around it to help them acclimate Baruch Hashem and really, you know, love her. <laughs> love her. It's so has a lot to do um, with that. So I have a lot of a lot of akaras to for that, and um, another area and everything. You know, Hashem runs the world. While I was uh, doing Morasha, so I never really had. Uh, the intention of becoming like a professional tour guide, but there was a tour guide course that was uh, being advertised through Landers. It was like two days a week, and uh, with some of the best tour guides in this country. And um, I thought to myself, I was starting to work four or five o'clock most days anyway, and so I actually took this course, and it was an amazing course. Now I didn't really take it with the intention of becoming a tour guide because, you know, an intense part of the course were the summers, and I was still heavily employed in Marsha as a director. I would go like, you know, a month before camp started. They did a lot of trips during the summer, but I did go, you know, twice a week for almost two years on um, as part of this course. And I will tell you that had a tremendous impact on me. Um, maybe we'll segue, we'll talk about Ashrenu soon, but that, the, that two years and the, that course and being able to explore and see Eretz Israel, you know, in a way which was Amazing it had a major impact upon me, you know, um, when uh, Ashrenu began. Now I kind of want to like hear a little bit about the story of, of how Ashrenu came to be, and, and, and also within creating the yeshiva, the structure of the yeshiva, which I'm sure you're going to talk about a little bit, um, which I want to hear more about, is is not as conventional as like a typical American gap yeshiva. So kind of take me through the process of what did it take to to to, to build up Ashrenu to what it is today, and then kind of bring me through that 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 process. Sure, thanks. So, listen, you know, it was really, things were doing great and wonderful in Morasha, but as I said, you know, traveling one week out of every month, and as my kids were starting to grow here and stuff, and in my heart and in my mind, you know, um, and I remember already from my days when I was at Frisch, I was, you know, when I was assistant principal, so I was director of admissions, but I was also doing Israel guidance for a bunch of years at the time, and I remember, you know, meeting with kids at the time, and they would say, you know, I, I want to go to Israel for the year, and they would go through the schedule. I look at some of the schedules of some of the yeshivot, and basically, most of your classical yeshivot has learning in the morning, and then they have learning in the afternoon, and yet, well, here's the zinger and creativity. is actually learning at night, the night <laughs> seder, which is beautiful, and that was, you know, and that's the classical seder ayom of a yeshiva. But I remember, you know, already kids when I was in Frisch saying to me, Rabbi, I want to go to Israel for the year, but I don't know if I, I, I don't know if I could sit, or I don't know if I want to sit, you know, in the in the all day or sit eight to ten hours in yeshiva classroom, and that was very much, you know, in the back of my mind. And I remember at the time having to be creative to try and help them find. There really wasn't an, there wasn't an Ashrenu, and there wasn't really programs, you know, for kids. And there were kids who were not coming to Israel um, for the year because of that. Um, so, in full transparency, when you know, I really thought I wanted to focus my life more here. Um, Ashrena really began with a good friend of ours from Teaneck who had a son and who uh, went to SAR High School. And honestly, after all the Yeshivot had come to present at SAR, so this, uh, this kid said to his dad, listen, I'm happy to go to Israel for the year. I'm happy I want to grow as a Jew. I'm happy to learn. But uh, from what I'm looking at the schedule, I think I'm just not going to go. I'm just going to go straight to Cornell next year, and I'm just not going to go to Israel for the year. And a friend of mine called me up. And he said, gosh, you got to help me out because I need my son to go to Israel for the year. I really want him to go to Israel for the year, and there's really no program. And uh, I'll be honest with you, this conversation happened uh, probably beginning of November. And he called, we had a conversation, maybe it was a Thursday. And I said, you know, give me Shabbos to think about it. And over Shabbos, think about it. And, I, you know, he's really right, and there really isn't something. And I'm, I remember that... Um, I was thinking to myself, okay, and if that's really the issue, you know, so what can we do? First of all, you know, uh, for a guy's yeshiva, that could. So last time I checked, I don't know, pretty sure it says in Pirkei Avos, I'll show you the all the and it's you know, it's Torah, it's Avoda and Gemilas Chasadim, and please, in every way, shape, or form, you know, the, the concept of a Talmud Torah can get kulam, and definitely, you know, appreciate on every level the impact the Torah has on our life. Um, but, and it's not, it's not a but, at the end of the day, when a person, the reason why, and, you know, we sing two songs every day in Ashrenu, as part of our davening, which we've done now, thank God, for 12 years. And uh, we sing, 
going to cry, but we sing if to us Hashem b'Simcha, and and this is a cry of joy, and you got to sing. It's called Pesuket Zimra. So if you know if we if it's called Pesuket Zimra, you got to sing. So we sing, we sing if to us Hashem b'Simcha, and we do a lot of nine and a nine and a nine, and you got to nine and a nine and a nine. You got to sing that, and you got to really believe it because it's that's part of what it is. And so that's one song that we sing, and we sing right before the Shema in uh, Avarabah. So you have the pasuk of Vino Avarachman, and we ask Hashem. Shem, give me the ability, Lil Mod, Ulalamed, Lishmore. And I'll be honest with you, in most of my interviews, I ask the boy, what's the next word or what's the next? And if they say lasso, usually I say you're accepted to Ashrenu. But the key word is lasso. And at the end of the day, you know, we, we may daven every day, but we have to pay attention to what we say when we daven. But the reason why we learn, no reason, the Gemara says that was Limud is so important, it's because Limud is ultimately meant to be Mevi, Lide Masa. The reason why we learn is that we should be able to live. I don't want to date myself or quote myself, but there's a song that says, everybody walk this way <laughs> after walking the ways of Hashem. Okay, that's Valach the Bedrachav. We had it first. So you have to walk in Hashem's ways. What does Hashem do? What's, what's God doing all day? What is Hashem doing all day? So he's busy. Hashem is busy. And the Gemara tells us. He's, you know, he's Mavakar Chola. He's helping people. He's visiting this. So, you know, okay. So if that's the reason why we learn. Uh, we learn as a Jew in order to help us how we're supposed to live our life. So I'm sitting here thinking at the end of the day, and please, uh, I say this with tremendous respect. I know there are a lot of girls' seminaries and stuff that, you know, specialize and dedicate an afternoon, you know, to doing chesed. And I said to myself over that Shabbat, you know, you know chesed is not limited to, in our religion, to young ladies. And there's definitely an obligation to do chesed, you know, for men. And, uh, you know, and so I thought, okay, yes, and, you know, we could learn, you know, we could learn in the mornings, but maybe a wonderful way to address the need was to say, okay, we're going to dedicate, you know, our afternoons to doing chesed. And what a natural, and I'll tell you something. I, um, over the years, the 12th year, I had uh, the seventh year of Ashrenu, I hired a person who was in charge of the chesed. It was like we were having a faculty meeting, and I was saying in Ashrenu, you know, in the morning we learn, and then in the afternoon, like, we do chesed. It's such an amazing transition, and it was, I won't say his name, and I almost, I didn't fire, I would never fire, I don't really fire anybody in my life, but, uh, you know, he said, what do you mean? It's not that, you know, it's not like, oh, at Ashrenu, first in the morning we do chesed, and then, excuse me, in the morning we learn, and then in the afternoon we do chesed. Hello, the most natural transition in the world. Think about this for a second. If you study Torah for three hours in the morning, close to three hours every morning, okay, now that I've finished learning for, you know, from 9, you know, 30 till 12, 30, 1 o'clock, you know, okay, announcements, Mincha, lunch, okay, what's the most, the most natural transition? Is now let's act upon that which we just learned. Let's go to chesed. So Ashrein was like, you know, oh, in the morning we do ch- in learning, and in the afternoon we do chesed. No, no, no. In the morning we learn Torah because the natural transition for a person after you study Torah is so you've got to act upon it. You've got to live it. You've got to do it. It's very easy to talk to talk. But you've got to walk the walk. It's all, you know, so, you know, Baruch Hashem, you know, in my heart and my, heart, in my mind, that was going to set us apart, and that's why, you know, it was a discussion, should we, three days of chesed, four days of chesed, and, you know, uh, when I started the yeshiva, and I definitely have to give a, a lot of a Satov, I started the yeshiva for, for the first couple of years with someone of the name of Rabbi Ari Gruen, who I actually met on the tour guiding course that I spoke about, and, uh, you know, uh, he, he became a licensed tour guide, an amazing tour guide, definitely shout out people, families, people should use him, still very close friends to this day. And in my mind, it was an amazing partnership, you know, for him and I. And um, yeah, so I think we can't, you know, at this, at then we decided we're going to devote three afternoons to Chesed. And as I mentioned, you know, the impact and because I had been on this course and listen, you could come to Israel and I'm a big believer in this. You know, the Gemara Ksubos tells us that the rabbis used to roll around the dirt of Eretz Yisrael. So, you know, kids are coming to Israel and they're coming to Israel for, to, for the year to learn for a gap year. So I say this with respect. You could learn Torah anywhere in the world. And Baruch Hashem, there's beautiful learning all over the world. It's called, everywhere you go, there's, you know. But if you come into Eretz Israel for the year, you gotta see Israel. And you gotta experience Israel. And you gotta connect to this land. And you can learn anywhere. But if you come in here, you gotta see it. And you gotta get, you gotta get jiggy with it. I don't know how you wanna, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta connect to this land. You have to roll, you gotta get dirty with Eretz Israel, literally, and roll around in the dirt. And so when we thought about this yeshiva, and I thought, you know, what could, uh, you know, what could, how could we make this unique and a little bit, you know, different than everything else? 
So we three afternoons we were uh, devoting to to doing chesed, and I'm very proud to this day. You know, every Monday and Thursday we have what's called individual chesed, and I'll get into that a little bit more. And every Wednesday we do a group chesed in Ashrenu, and thank God we've been doing that for 12 years. And um, again, as a kid, a lot of influence at camp on my life. So I camp at Camp Morasha when I was in the high school kolo and the college kolo, something called No Tour Tuesday. That was like the, uh, and Tuesdays you used to take a trip or more trips in camp. So my, why we pick Tuesday, but Baruch Hashem, every single Tuesday at Yeshiva Ashrenu, we dedicate to exploring Eretz Israel. And, you know, when I interview guys and, you know, if I had our brochure in front of us, it's a trifold brochure purposely. And in the first part it says, Ashrenu, great Torah learning, middle page, Great Chesed, middle page, Tiulim, Great Tiulim, and those are the three components of the yeshiva. And I definitely think, you know, that's definitely, you know, what what we, you know, what makes us, what, what we sets us apart, and how we stand out. I think most of those, all each one of those uh, areas are so so important for a student's development. I'm very curious to hear, in, in terms of just your experience for doing this for so many years, like you have these kids that come from these modern Orthodox backgrounds, all these different high schools across the country, and sometimes throughout the yeshiva year, it's a little bit hard to get inspired and you need different, you know, whether we're to give you a specific schmooze or, or whatnot. Now that you've kind of taken the, the chesed component and made that such like a pivotal foundation piece to Ashrenu from the past, you know, 12 years running the yeshiva, like give me a little bit of a Pesach into that. Like what has that done for Talmidim in terms of their growth and, and, and just their hashka fasachayim and, and whatnot? So listen, I think at the end of the day, you know, um, the shivim padam la Torah, and, you know, it's so important, you know, Yiddish guy is so much about our connection with Hashem, and there's so many things within the learning that we do at Yeshiva, which I think also focus on that. I'm very proud we have within our uh, morning learning, we have your morning, main morning Gemara Rebbe, we have a curriculum which we call First to Basics, and it's sort of plan words and back to basics, and I really, Baruch Hashem, had the privilege and the ability to be on the other side of the desk I guess in Yeshiva Day School and in America for 15 years and to sort of have that experience as well. And, you know, as much as, you know, there's curriculums that are focused in high school and finishing up Prakim and, and Dapim and Gemara, but so much of Yiddishkeit is about your connection with Hashem and topics having to do with God and our relationship with God and things of that nature, you know, something which I'm very, very proud of. But the way one connects to Hashem, for sure, learning Torah is one of them. But what I'm crazy proud of at Ashrenu is that I think our schedule and, you know, if you had to, you know, if I had to summarize Ashrenu in two words, it's learning plus. And um, what we offer and the plus gives boys the opportunity to connect to Yiddishkeit and to ne- connect to Hashem in other ways or in additional ways only other than learning Torah. And again, learning Torah is amazing and obviously... I have a tremendous respect and understand that different schools will emphasize different, you know, subjects and hashkafa and, you know, we, tana, you know, amazing. But there are, first of all, either kids who are not so academic and or, who are not so focused or it doesn't speak to them so much, you know, the classical textual type of learning. So having yeshiva where, um, number one, in terms of chesed, being able to shine and to be able to you know, feel so accomplished. And when they put their head on the pillow at night, you know, what did I do with my day today? So I, Baruch Hashem, I had a great rabbi, I had great learning, I connected to that rabbi by this afternoon. Oh my gosh, I, well, we can start talking about the chesed we've done, but, you know, I have boys who take courses in my game David Adom. We've probably delivered over 100 babies, m- way more than that, in the 12 years, you know, uh, that are trained to exist. We have boys every year that, you know, take, take a course in my game David Adom, and they take shifts on ambulances here in Israel. So, you know, I don't know, you, can, you can't really give me a bigger mitzvah than pikuach nefesh in our religion. And so at the end of the day, you know, what do you do today? Well, I helped save some lives. You know, actually, I brought a baby into this world. When you start thinking about what you could accomplish, you know, as part of your day, you know, that's pretty incredible. And so it gives boys an opportunity to shine in areas that are not just academic and not just in learning. And Baruch Hashem, very proud of boys that do shine in learning and, you know, you know, and uh, very, very proud of that. But to give boys the opportunity to, to shine there, and I'll be honest with you, the, the Tulim as well, you know, there's some kids who are awesome at hikes and are leaders and, you know, could do crazy stuff and their personality could come out and they could, 
you know, take over at TU in a certain way. And all these things give boys the opportunity to, to shine and to grow and to connect in ways that are not just, you know, one facet. And then in most classical yeshiva, if, you know, you know, you know, they have great rabbam, and if you're really getting into the learning, great. But if you're not, then it's, it could be a little bit challenging. That's number one. And I would say number two, listen, I have this chudah 12 years, and I'm very, very proud of the fact that, you know, uh, we definitely stay in touch with, you know, our alumni and, you know, come to Ashrena, which is not a year, uh, or Shana Bet, which Baruch Hashem, that was also something, you know, which is not a given. Like everything in life, first five years of yeshiva, never even had a Shana Bet. Year six, we had two boys, our first two Shana Bet. And Baruch Hashem went to six and to eight and then to 10 and to 18 and 13. And Baruch Hashem, you know, just to have that. And that's been a game changer for sure in our yeshiva. But that wasn't a given uh, for sure at the beginning. And uh, just by being in touch with Talmidim and being in touch with alumni, so, yeah, there's no question about it. If you ask me, you know, what's a success at Ashrenu? And uh, how do, how do, what, what's a boy that succeeded in my yeshiva? And I really, in my heart, you know, if a, young, if a young man gets married whenever they decide to get married, years later, and if, please God, there's going to be Zmiros at their Shabbat table, oh, you cry? That's a score. And I'm not, and I'm not belittling. I'm not belittling how many dapam of Gemara, they'll, I mean, how many sechtos they're going to learn, and obviously, you know, encourage boys that they should be obviously going to shiurim and so proud. But at the end of the day, if you're going into chinuch and so on and so forth, towards your life, amazing. But the reality of life is that you know many boys who are going into business and going into different fields of life, when they go back to their communities. So yes, Baruch Hashem, and boys, they go to the, they'll go to a rough shear or they'll go to one night a week. But how do they, how do they stand out in their communities, and what's the opportunity that they have to really later in their life? And as my alumni develop and grow, so you know to have a yeshiva for great balabatim, I say that without you know it's a lechat chilo without any regret and without any like trying to hide it. Yeah, Ashrena is probably an yeshiva where our goal is to make wonderful. Balabatim. Do I have a few rabbeim down the pike that despite the fact that we did all the chesed and despite the fact we go to the that they've gone into chinach? Okay, beautiful. Believe me, that's not something that's something I encourage and I'm very proud of. But at the end of the day, to be able to be in touch with students and I have, you know, guys who have dedicated their life, their professional EMTs. I have guys that are heads of Hatsala in their neighborhoods and their communities where they go. You know, I have guys, you know, who are continuing to contribute in so many unique Tom Cheshabas and so many beautiful ways of chesed that they've done in yeshiva and in their now adult married life, they found real meaningful ways to continue that and to continue that connection. And definitely pride myself and Ashrenu that, you know, guys have that opportunity. You know, I, I, I think it's so unique and special to, to kind of like what Ashrenu does. And the fact that you have it built so into the schedule, I, I can't help but think that, you know, there are probably people listening to this that are in a yeshiva schedule where they're not in Ashrenu. They have learning in the morning, learning in the afternoon, learning at night. And they may be that person that's like, you know, I, I do connect to Chesed more. I do, you know, say maybe I could take more part of my time of my day and, and dedicate to Chesed. So for somebody that, that, that let's say is in yeshiva where, where the setup is not the same as Ashrenu, what would your advice be to that person of like, you know, this is what you could do to, to maybe get a little more chesed into your day? All right, so first of all, you know, I definitely have to be very careful here because a lot of very close friends of mine run a lot of these other yeshiva. And at the end of the day, listen, at this, this Baruch Hashem, there's 24 hours in a day. And in every yeshiva, you know, there are breaks, you know, that are given to guys. And, and I'm sure, and, and knowing so many mechavrem that run yeshiva, that, you know, if a, if a guy would come over to any of them or a Rebbe within the yeshiva and say, you know, hey, I got a two-hour break in the afternoon, but an hour of that break I want to dedicate, you know, towards, uh, you know, helping or doing some type of, you know, chesed, I'm sure they wouldn't uh, knock that down. Listen, at the end of the day, and there, listen, there are imitation in a certain way there. In the last couple number of years, there are a number of gap year yeshivos that um, definitely do a lot more chesed within their day and have definitely... You know, uh, take it as a compliment. Do a lot more chesed within the day, and that's that's amazing. And you know, the very fact that you know people are benefiting and 
you know, from that type of chesed is definitely, you know, uh, wonderful and definitely a compliment to what Baruch Hashem we've been doing. So, you know, uh, what's interesting in life, if I had a dollar for every parent, very often when I'm talking about the yeshiva and say, wow, I wish there was a yeshiva like that when I was a kid, I would go, or, or could I go to that yeshiva? So that's always been, uh, you know, really nice, you know, uh, for me and for, for our Shrenu. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, there's definitely opportunities, and there's definitely, you know, uh, after you finish, you know, while you're in yeshiva, to speak to people here, and when you're finished, you know, to, you know, to get involved in all different types of important things. You know, there's there's a question that I'm thinking of in my mind, and this is definitely a conversation I've had with people before, which I'm sure you've, you've probably also heard what I'm about to say, is that sometimes people look at the year in Israel, and they're like, you have 10 months to sometimes take a kid who comes from a background where in the modern orthodox world like yes the the education system teaches us a certain amount but there's a certain level of like okay it could do more to help us get religious and then people come to israel and, and they grow here with that being said since a kid only has call it the 10 months of his year which is majority of students because they don't come back to Shabbat, a lot of people would probably say hey just like take the chesed and leave it for after somebody leaves israel and 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 just focus on learning because when you have the ability to be in a makam of torah to just build your skills and focus on that that's what's going to carry a kid. And then the chesed, okay, you could, you could go to Pantry Packers once you move back to America, go to YU or, or wherever it may be. So what would, you, what, what would your response be to someone who, who kind of says that? So I would say, listen, you know, yesh for yesh for yesh. And if there is a kid who already knows uh, in 12th grade and, and has the, the ability and can, you know, sit and learn, you know, all day, wonderful. You and I know, and let's be honest, and you know, definitely come a long way, baby, and without, there are definitely certain Israel guidance people in certain schools in America, when we first started, were very skeptical about what our trainer was doing, and definitely had the mindset, and I, don't, I wouldn't say, you know, we've come a long way, baby, as the expression goes, and I think many of those people have come around and definitely see it, but we do, the reality is that as much as, let's even say the argument that you just made, which I don't even, you know, uh, you know, you could say, you know, wow, you have that year and we should dedicate that only. The reality is that for many, many kids, and it be a very interesting study to see what that number is, you know, and Baruch Hashem, many kids do, but there are many, many kids who do not. And for sure, to push a kid in that direction and hope that after four, five, six months, they're going to sink or swim. And I don't have to tell you, between, you know, your friends or people that I know and friends of mine, you know, you know not every kid is swimming. And... And not every kid, you know, takes to, to learning the way they could or are able to. And, but I think it's even, it's even more than that. that. I think Latov and looking things in a very positive way, I, I don't really think that what the chesed that we do, I don't really look at that as a, a bidyeved. I really feel that for the right kids, and, I, I, you know, obviously you know, there, there's a place for everyone and there should be a place for everyone, I just want, and I want to share a little bit in terms of background. For sure, when I started Ashrenu, in my mindset, Ashrenu was going to be for kids who were coming from modern Orthodox backgrounds, from day schools, who I would say was sort of part of, you know, about learning, and you know, they weren't like, oh, I can't, you know, wait to learn. But you know, and they were looking at some of the schedules of these yeshivas and say, whoa, I don't think I'm going to go. So that was probably the initial thought. I will tell you that Baruch Hashem, it's a, been a tremendous chus at Ashrenu, a, you know, a with with my involvement in NCSY, and think about it, if a kid becomes, let's say, religious during high school, through, you know, through NCSY or from public school, and Baruch Hashem, you know, they're unbelievably motivated, but very often they don't necessarily have the skills to be able to sit in yeshiva that learns all day. So we've had the tremendous chus over the years, and I think, you know, the breadth, with a D, of the type of boys that Ashrei knew, we're not really a cookie cutter yeshiva, and really have been zocha to take a lot of boys who, for some of them, you never look at, saw a Gemara in their life. And for them, the options, in terms of what's available now, for them to come to Ashrenu makes sense because it's a way for them to slowly, or to give them a chance to, so, and very often those kids from a motivation, or very often they will surpass kids from Yeshiva Day School who've been learning, you know, at Yeshiva education their whole life. So that's been a tremendous chus um, in our Yeshiva to have boys like that. Um, I'll be also honest with you, especially the last number of years and, you know, different hashkafos. You know, I, I grew up in a very special home um, hashkafically. Um, it's ironic. Just now during the war, my dad 
just grew a beard. <laughs> For the first time, my dad's turning 80 this summer. But, uh, and my mom. Never had a beard. And uh, I grew up in a home, you gotta love Jews. And uh, it doesn't matter, you know, Michael Jackson, don't matter if you're black or white, hashkafically, yes hat, no hat, this, that. And um, I will say that, you know, it's interesting, within the world, um, may, and maybe it's a, a little bit, I'll take the, you know, I remember once meeting of Moshe Rav Scherer from the Aguda, and he said, I, I drive, and my driver every Friday, I pull over, and when your dad's on the radio, I make sure to listen to your, to your father, and I'll welcome my dad in. You know, people from very yeshivish and very more to the right backgrounds are, you know, uh, tremendously complimented my dad and so on and so forth and listen to his Torah. He's still, he's still on J and the AM. It's only over 30 years that he gives Divrei Torah. And I'm just saying that within in the yeshivish world and in that world, Baruch Hashem, especially in the last five, six years, also Ashrena has been a place where kids... A, one, one, one option for kids who come from more yeshivish backgrounds or from who maybe it's, you know, they haven't really had so much of a chance to breathe and they felt very, very, you know, uh, trapped. And, um, you know, it's not our MO and it's not really what I started this yeshiva for, but definitely have had this chus. And if our yeshiva has a reputation for having patience and having the ability to you know, not be so judgmental, um, so definitely very, very proud of that. So that's also become an interesting, you know, part of our yeshiva as well. And, uh, you know, you know, me personally, maybe it's definitely a part of my personality, you know, and to give kids like that a place to, to breathe and to have a healthy uh, form of Yiddishkeit, you know, is, is really is a schut. I'm a, I'm a lucky guy. Um, yeah, so I think that's really, you know, an interesting component of what, what your typical Australia student is, because the real answer is, there really isn't. You know, uh, and we have yesh v'yesh v'yesh every year, Baruch Hashem. So that's, a, that's our privilege. You know, I, I kind of want to touch on what we were speaking about, you know, before we got on camera. Um, you know, you talk a lot about what Hashreenu has done in the past, and I find it fascinating to, to see what you've been able to build up, Baruch Hashem, in, in a completely new light now. Kind of take me what your vision is for the future of it. I know we're sitting here in Neve Shamir filming this, uh, you know, overlooking Mishkafim, which is the, now the new campus of, of Ashrina. But kind of, you know, take me through what's what's kind of the next few years looking like, I don't know, for Ashrina. Good, I'm going to give you that. But before I give you the future, I want to, you know, I, there are a few things. We're sitting here, and I just, you know, at the beginning, just getting back to, and I'll, I'll address that for sure, and I appreciate that question. Um, when you start a yeshiva, and I remember November, that my, my friend gave me that, and I remember it was like a week or two, to um, the uh, presentation weeks in America for the schools for that year. And I remember we had to make a brochure for a yeshiva that didn't exist. And I knew at that time we wanted to put together yeshiva that there was going to be chesed and there was going to be teulim every week. So thank God our son, we have a son who's uh, 29 now, Alex, and he was um, that year in uh, 12th grade. So I remember I took pictures of... Uh, him going, uh, uh, him in high school went on, uh, on Tio Lim, pictures of the back of boys, because uh, I couldn't say they went to my yeshiva. Never, st never had guys in our yeshiva. How do you make a brochure without a yeshiva, you know, without, so I had my son's friends, and I remember, this is a real funny one, I remember um, we, uh, in terms of chesed, one of the things that we continue to do, we work, and definitely would like to speak about the types of chesed that we do at Ashrenu. But, um, you know, we do a lot, you know, and initially I also attract a lot of uh, athletes and a lot of sports. You know, you could do chesed, and if you do chesed, you know, you know guys, you gotta, so what are the things that guys like to do? And I'm not trying to, you know, so, you know, there are kids at risk in Beit Shemesh here, kids, 10, 11 year old kids who come from, you know, difficult family, and they're after school centers here that exist. And some of our guys go there. There are many basketball courts there and soccer courts and to play ball at them. So I remember making the brochure in the beginning. I, um, we, we, we had a picture, and I don't want to date myself or get sued, but we're going back now a long time, and we took a picture, and we, like, I think we, uh, like, uh, we uh, stroked uh, tzitzis 
and I, and, and I keep on some because you know uh, on some of the students because uh, I, I didn't have didn't have a brochure and I remember when I started our training I thought maybe we'd have 15 20 kids in the first year and and I literally had these brochures being printed as I was flying into New York that first year and I thought maybe we'd have 15 maybe 20 boys our first year and Baruch Hashem you know uh, with a lot of Siata Deshmaya we had th- over 30 boys our first year. And for sure, it definitely showed, you know, the need at the time. And uh, thank God, you know, we've kept up, you know, on average around 40, 45 boys uh, each year in the yeshiva. Um, and then Baruch Hashem, Shana Bet came and definitely, you know, uh, so that was definitely a lot of fun, you know, uh, from nothing, you know, creating something. And that, you know, that's been an amazing uh accomplishment and definitely, a, you know, amazing, uh, you know, schut. And in terms of the future, so listen, you know, um, we were, for the first 11 years, and it's funny, when you start a yeshiva, I didn't have a campus, I didn't have anything. And we, I was, you know, uh, trying to present, we, so what do you do? I went to Tzion. Tzion's a taxi driver. Uh, my brother, I'll give a shout out to my brother, Andy, who was a Rebbe in Shraga, very, very close to Tzion. I remember going to Tzion, and I said, I want to start a guy's yeshiva. Um, I'm looking for a place in Beit Shemesh. What do you need? Three things. I needed a base medrash, I needed a basketball court, I needed a charocho. And so Tzion, who lived here most of his life, said to me, "There's a place called Kiryat Chinuch." I had we had been living in Beit Shemesh for six or seven years, never heard of Kiryat Chinuch, never been there. It was like seven minute car ride from my house, and I literally went to the entranceway on the top of the stairs there. You, you can't even see the campus. And I got in, went through the past the security guard. I said, like, who's in charge here? Went downstairs, found the person. And I said, listen, you know, I'd like to tr- see if I could try and start yeshiva. I heard that there's potentially there's room here on this campus. And everything's timing in life. You know, at the time, I think there was a Hezda yeshiva that they were considering having at this campus. And they built this amazing campus that had a lot of room at the time. And uh, we made a shidduch, and I really thank Tzion to this day. And Tzion has helped me. In so many ways, he's our driver. We use his dad is our bus driver for every two every two every Tuesday. We've been using Sionov, a company for every year for 12 years. A lot of our cars are over there. And um, in terms of yes, that's how the uh, that's how yeshiva started. But listen, while we were there and in life, um, you know, Baruch Hashem, looking back, so many unbelievable memories and so many unbelievable moments of yeshiva. Um, in the sixth year of the yeshiva, we had a tremendous, tremendous, terrible, terrible tragedy. And um, one of our Talmidim, uh, Ezra Schwartz, all of a shalom, was murdered in a pigua on his way to doing chesed uh, at Tzomer Agush. That year, and that was the year, and here we are now, where we are, we find ourselves. That was the summer after the three boys, unfortunately, had been kidnapped and they were found, and um, Ezra Olav Shalom was very, very uh, driven, and as all of Kali Yisrael was, uh, the concern about the boys and everything, and after they were found, there's a place in, uh, in right next to Tomer Agush, right there, it's called Oz Vigaon, and um, it had been used for many years as a garbage dump by the neighbors and stuff, and um, Nadia Matar and amazing people from Oz Vigaon had this vision that they would try and make an educational center in memory of the boys that were kidnapped and murdered that summer. And Baruch Hashem, we became like an address for Chesed. And somehow we had the connection to uh, with Nadia and we took the boys during a Sarasim Chuva to Oz Vigaon. And it was the first year they were about to open Oz Gaon. And we came with 30, 40 boys. We must have come on a Wednesday afternoon group chesa day. And they said to us, you see this area here? There's like stones. And we want, if you can, if you don't mind, we want to build a sukkah. And we're expecting, hopefully, Kali Israel is going to come to Oz Vigaon over Sukkot. And we want to build a sukkah. And we want to build it here on the road, but we have all these like rocks so could you mind helping us? So gave us gloves and wheelbarrows, and, and we were for two, two and a half hours, we had a great time. We were chucking rocks at each other, and 
I could close my eyes and I picture him. I take the boys, we go back there every year and we go to the place and after two hours, there was you know, an area where they were able to build a very, very big sukkah and Ezra was so taken by the time that we spent there and after we did that, so we, that became a chesed or a regular chesed that Ashrenu did once a week and we would take boys every Thursday to go to Ozvagaon and they would volunteer there and help develop this beautiful place which was going to be an educational center and for kids and so on and so forth. We had gone actually that morning to Aisha Torah. We brought the boys that morning to Discovery at Aish and um, we got up early, <laughs> Ashrenu early to get to the old city on time and on the way back Ezra was uh, tired and you know, um, was thinking maybe, you know, maybe I won't go to Chesed this afternoon. But he pushed himself and he said, I'm going to go. And he and seven other boys were in a van that we provided from the yeshiva to go to drive to, to the Gush. And uh, he took a nap. I was asleep. And uh, yeah, so yeah, that was. Uh, one of the lowest, maybe the lowest, one of the hardest days, probably the hardest day of my life. I was actually in America uh, recruiting. It was November 19th. It was my last day of uh, recruiting. I was in the basement of Flatbush High School. They were having an Israel fair. There's no klita there, no phone service, no nothing. And I presented there, and as soon as I came out of the building, all of a sudden my phone, literally, I, I thought I, I, I never in my life got so many shakes and fire. And, I, and at first I got a phone call from, at the time, Rabbi Kifa Naiman, who was, uh, I was, I said, gosh, I don't, you know, Ezra was, at the time, he said, injured, and Loa Lenu, and, yeah, so that's, um, yeah, one of the darkest and most challenging, uh, personally, in our life, and, you know, uh, for the yeshiva, and really, really, um, Crazy times, um, a crazy time. But I will tell you, um, uh, Ezra's parents, Dr. Ari and, and Ruth uh, Malachim, and, uh, I remember uh, they came to Israel. A week later, we had a whole, um, we, had, we hosted every yeshiva and seminary at our campus, and we had, that was during the week of Shiva, and we finished Tanakh. Ezra, on the way, after a Torah that day, said to one of his rabbeim, I want to take a goal. I'd like to want to try and finish Tanakh this year. So I remember that week we had every yeshiva seminary, boys and girls, and that night we gave out all of Tanakh. To, we photocopied, actually learned my parak with uh, the mayor of Beit Shemesh and I, who's now running for mayor here, Moshe Abupal. We learned the parak in Nehemiah together. Um, but uh, we finished Tanakh that night. And um, I mentioned this aside from you know, the Shloshim, which we did for Ezra, which was not so usual. People in Mishnayis, you know, for a Shloshim. Ezra was crazy about wiffle ball. He was very crazy into baseball. He was a crazy athlete. He played wiffle ball with his brothers every Shabbos afternoon, crazy into wiffle ball. So uh, for the Shloshim, we actually had a wiffle ball field of dreams tournament in Gan Soccer in Yerushalayim. And uh, you couldn't descript it, but it was Ezra's family he came and there were boys from many yeshivas and many gap yeshivas that year, and there was a boys' uh, team, a wiffle ball team, from where uh, the city where Ezra came from, and they were in the championship against Ezra's family in the finals of the wiffle ball championship, and Ezra's sister Molly hit a double <laughs> for the, uh, to win the championship, you know, for the Schwartz family on that day. But I bring this up now, and I bring that up because, you know, first of all, unbelievably special and unique people. And I remember, you know, looking Dr. Ari and Ruth in the eyes and saying, in this country, you know, one of the things you learn about, unfortunately, first of all, when they, you know, when they try to knock you down, one of the things you do is you build. And uh, it's definitely been um, something which I'm very driven by and definitely been for sure a dream. You know, we, for many, many years, we were on the campus, we were on Kiryat Chinuch, and you know, if, you know, it's definitely a dream of mine and ours as yeshiva to build a campus in memory of Ezra. And that's uh, Bezrat Hashem, our plan. 
And uh, it started with Moshe Abu Paul, the mayor, but Aliza Blach, I gotta give a lot of Akara Satov. Um, definitely uh, appreciated the reason why and what we do and what Ashrenu is and was. And so she gave us a piece of land. I'm sitting right here in the Veshamir, um, overlooking most amazing view, overlooking the Gush, literally, you know, um, and Bezrat Hashem, you know, uh, that is the plan. Definitely need a couple million dollars uh, to get there, but Bezrat Hashem will we'll do it, and we're going to do it, and to build a uh, yeshiva in his memory, because in every way, Ezra represented everything that Ashrenu was, uh, was about. You know, and I bring this up, his Tanakh, his connection to learn. He was like a psychopath on every teal. He was a crazy skier, loves like, you know, taking risks, jumping. I, I go on pretty much all the teal with the guys and thank God I've been 12 years. Oh my God, year one. I don't know, I remember guys from year one, you know, cliffs and obviously you have to be responsible and I have a Christ. And, <laughs> but, you know, we take these guys to the place and say, you know, Kids, you know, what they could jump and kids and things they could do and the way they could shine. But that was Ezra. And, you know, that was, you know, when it came to sports, when it came to learning. And Chesed, you know, he was amazing with kids. Ezra represents everything that Shreya is about. And so to be able to build a campus um, in his memory is, you know, a dream and something that um, I'm driven to do. So, and I hope as Rad Hashem, we will be able to fulfill that dream within the next couple of years. So I, I, first of all, just thank you so much for sharing that story about Ezra. Um, and, and I think the fact that he was such a pivotal part of Ashrenu and kind of what you said, how he was just, he was a powerhouse in, 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 in his own way of, of just wanting to grow and wanting to, to become his, his better version of himself. Um, I want to refer back a little bit before we, we kind of touch on that story, tell a little bit more of the, the specific chesed aspects of Ashrenu. Um, take me a little bit more through that process of, okay, when you decide to start a yeshiva and it was like, I want to add chesed to the afternoon, it was like, okay. If I want to add chesed, how am I going to do that? So take me a little bit through what you guys offer in our training and kind of what, what guys do in the afternoon. Yeah, so, I, you know, in my heart and mind, I was definitely definitely trying to think of ways and, you know, um, in life and in just in education, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You know, people like to do things that they like to do. And, you know, when we were creating, you know, the opportunities and when I was looking for opportunities, you know, I was definitely trying to think of, you know, what, what do guys like to do? You know, what are they into? And definitely, you know, we've also been evolving. But, um, you know, if you want to be, you know, uh, stereotypical, so guys like sports, so how could we creative and how could we, you know, incorporate, you know, doing chesed, sports and doing chesed. So definitely very, very proud of the fact that, you know, uh, we had local kids from the neighborhood, you know, uh, from all different, you know, backgrounds, you know, Ethiopian uh, kids and all different, and we would have sports clinics, you know, uh, set up leagues, you know, teach kids how to play ball. And, you know, these were kids who couldn't afford to have organized type of sports or anything like that. So that was, you know, uh, one element of uh, stuff that we do. Definitely, I mentioned Magain David Adom, which is something amazing that, you know, guys take a course in and can do. But, you know, listen, Yachad, you're going back to my NCSY days, there are so many kids, you know, here in Beit Shemesh uh, with special needs. You like to swim. Oh, I like to swim. Ah, right. well, there's an amazing organization called Shalva. And you know what? Shalva has an amazing indoor pool. And if you've been a lifeguard and you love swimming, and so, wow, I could, I could swim. I could swim with kids with special needs and go to Shalva every Thursday and, you know, do swimming. You know, I love animals. I love animals. Well, Rabbi Slifkin has an amazing museum, you know, biblical museum here, which, you know, uh, a room dedicated to all the chauffeurs of the world and what's a kosher animal, what's not a kosher animal. So I love animals. So all right, there are guys in Ashrain who volunteer at his museum. There are guys who, uh, I love dogs. You guys, you know, the guys, there's a pound in uh, the gush that our guys volunteer, you know, working with animals. Year one, there's a, there's a farm that worked um, with uh, horses and kids that were on the spectrum. And my guys, you know, were helping care for the horses, but helping taking kids out. And you know, listen, there's no shortage of uh, chesed in the world. Uh, elderly people, you know, crazy proud. I don't know, I like playing chess. So there was an old age home that was down the block from Ashrenu that had a lot of you know, Nitzolei Shoah. There were you know, people from the former Soviet Union, you know, older men who they couldn't communicate a word, but they were sick chess players. And I've had guys who were really good at chess. And they would go and they would play chess 
with you know uh, someone who had the schut to come to Eretz Yisrael and and to bring a smile to their face and to you know and that's a tremendous chesed just playing chess. So with a little bit of creativity and you know with a little bit of uh, there's a lot a lot of needs you know forget about this year during the war and you know all the stuff uh, you know by Son or, or now run Mike Son who definitely need to give a shout out to you know for all the wonderful Tilim that, you know, he uh, coordinates for us. And, you know, uh, when he was, uh, went this year, he went for two days. Uh, I wasn't, our son was in Gaza, my son-in-laws were in Gaza. I didn't really get a chance to recruit this year. But, um, you know, he, he was speaking to some of the high schools. And he said, you know, Arashrenu, you know, we, we did chesed before. It was cool to do chesed, you know. Baruch Hashem now, whatever, during the war, and, you know, we, should, we shouldn't need war and stuff, and obviously a lot of people have gotten involved, and there's a tremendous effort and need that Kalah Yisrael has, but Bezrat Hashem, you know, as long as Hashem gives us the uh, strength and the ability to, you know, uh, you know, the war is going to be over, and we're going to have Shalom, and there's still chesed that needs to be done, and there's, you know, tremendous opportunities and ways in which, you know, you can help people, and definitely, you know, proud of, you know, the breath, and Maybe a little bit coming full circle, you know, people call us, you know, I have single moms calling me from, from the community, from Beit Shemesh. I need help putting up my sukkah. I need help taking down my sukkah. I need help with my kids because uh, I just can't do this on my own. And, you know, to be able to be a known address within a community to help people who have, you know, short-term needs, long-term needs, it's definitely, you know, a schut that we as a yeshiva have and definitely something we're very, very proud of. Well, and, and I think, of course, you should be proud of it because it's really, it's, it's special and, and being a neighbor of yours and, and seeing so many of my friends that have gone to Ashwin, I think it's it's super special. Okay, so, you know, the fact that you established a yeshiva um, that is called Ashrenu, you know, my question right now is, okay, the name Ashrenu, what does that mean to you and kind of how do you, you pick that name with making the yeshiva? So, I'll be honest with you, yeah, I uh, thank Hashem on most days that uh, he gave me above average looks and sort of average intelligence. And uh, I'm making a joke, and I definitely like to make jokes in life, but um, I don't know, you know, when we were thinking, when we started Yeshiva, and honestly, I was thinking of trying to think of what a name could be, and, you know, I'll be honest with you, you know, certain things need mazel. I don't know if Karbanos was always my best fila in my life, you know, growing up, and a lot of shuls, are very, uh, they skip Karbanos, you know, well, do Berchas HaShachar in the morning, and, uh, you know, you know, you know, Karbanos don't really get, but every day, as part of our davening, in the Karbanos section, there's a Pasuk, which we say, which is, Ashrenu Matov Chalkenu. Ashrenu, and I often ask most of my students on the uh, interview, do you know what the word Ashrenu means? And if they don't, I'm happy to share with them that Ashrenu really means how lucky we are. So if you think about it, what's amazing is in that Pasuk, you have the words, Ashrenu Matov Chalkeinu, how lucky, lucky we are that we have the Torah. But the Pasuk continues, Umana Im Goraleinu, how good is our lot? Now, how do you know how good your lot is in life? In life, you have to sort of be able to, you know, you go out into society, you see what people are doing, and relative to other people, you know how, like, you know, I'm doing all right, or when you go out there and you see other people need help, so your Goral has so much to do with doing chesed and seeing what's out there in the world and sort of, you know, uh, helping and assisting other people. And the Pasa concludes with the words, Umayafa Yerushatenu. How beautiful and how amazing, according to Benin Chazal, it's referring to Eretz Yisrael. So, I don't know, Hashem sort of gave me a little bit of an epiphany, which uh, in one Pasuk, you start off with the words, Ashrenu, how lucky we are to be able to have the Torah, how lucky we are to be able to do chesed, and how lucky we are to have Eretz Yisrael. And um, yeah, that's Ashrenu, baby. And Ashrenu, and I say to boys, if we could you know, help a person appreciate how lucky we are to have Torah in our life, how lucky we are to help other people in our life, and how lucky we are to have Eretz Yisrael, that's a score. That's really what Ashrenu is about, and we're lucky enough. It even has a song that goes with the yeshiva. If you start an yeshiva, definitely go with a, a name that's incorporated with the Ashrenu, and there's a bunch of different Ashrenus, but into songs with the word, but uh, at the end of the day, that's how uh, the yeshiva, that's how, that's how I decided to name the yeshiva that, and it really embodies everything that we uh, believe to be true and special. Kind of want to channel to my last question to, to you is that, 
you know, from doing all the chinuch that you've done, you know, working within Frisch, working within, you know, Cam Orsha, and now running Yeshiva, if there was one piece of advice that you could give to all your Talmudim and all the people you've worked with to say, take this as a message in a bottle and take it with you wherever you go in life, what would that message be? Well, first of all, I think when it comes to chinuch and when it comes to Jewish education, you need a lot, two very important ingredients. Number one, patience. And two, love. <laughs> a lot of patience and a lot of love. And uh, Baruch Hashem, you know, a, a, I've seen guys come to yeshiva from the gecko and jump right into our pool and jump right into the learning and jump right into chesed. And I have kids who have, be, you know, geo presidents of schools. And, and what's amazing is, though, but I've also had the schools to see guys, you know, come around who it wasn't their M.O., and they weren't necessarily so comfortable, you know, doing chesed. And they weren't, you know, some of the stuff from maybe, you know, being involved with kids with special needs or something that, was, that wasn't for them. And when you introduce opportunities for people and you give them the chance to do that, and, you know, and then they see, wow, this is something that I can do. This is something that I could be a part of. This is something that, you know, um, helps me grow. And, you know, in life, you give to other people, you get... And I am, be interesting to do a study and maybe, you know, one should and could. And I'm definitely so, so proud of our alumni and, you know, keeping in touch with them and their connection to Yiddish guy and their connecting, their connection to Am Yisrael afterwards. And I, I truly believe in my heart that because our boys have many, many opportunities to anchor themselves within Yiddishkeit and within Chinuch and within their experience here in Eretz Yisrael. You know, um, I really think that that enables so many of them to stay connected and to continue to be connected and to actually transform and carry it back when they go back to America or if they, and many come back here, Baruch Hashem. Thank God I have a lot, a lot of nachas of boys that are, you know, coming back and making Aliyah and coming and living here now. But wherever it is, I really think that, you know, we've had that opportunity and, you know, Never give up on kids because they come around. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, I've, um, I'll stop crying in a minute. <laughs> uh, but I, I've honestly seen miracles. I've honestly, you know, definitely seen kids or, you know, know of, I'm not saying kids where other educators or people have either given up on them or said, you know, there's no way. And some of those kids sometimes could be your biggest nachas. Or, you know, yeah, your biggest success. You never know. Wow. And I, I just, I, I want to first thank you again for, for coming. And just the, the, the realness and, and the raw emotions that you gave me is just something that I, I'm so grateful for. And just hearing how Yeshiva. My wife is going to kill me, by the way. <laughs> shout, <laughs> out. A, such a wish. shout out to the Rebson. Yeah. Um, just really thank you so, so much for, for taking the time and, and, and kind of giving us a little bit of a Pesach into what Ashreen has become and into also your life. And just really, I hope it could give a lot of people chizik. And thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity.